This video is sponsored by Fox, Cosmos, Possible Worlds, which premieres on September 22nd at 8 p.m. 7 Central on Fox. They've partnered with me to talk to you about science and as part of Cosmos Future Fair, Hope for Humanity and a Better Future. Hey folks, Phil Plate from Bad Astronomy here. I want to talk to you about exoplanets, alien worlds orbiting other stars, and the far-flung future of humanity. But first, I want to show you a demo. It'll seem simple, but it does relate to exoplanets. Now what I have here is a jar of water. Now I mixed a little bit of milk in it, just a few drops, and you can see that it's cloudy, whitish, right? Well, if I take a flashlight, turn it on, and shine it in, watch what happens to the light. Wow, look at that. See that near the top, the light looks blue, but near the bottom, it's yellow, reddish, kind of, right? What is going on? Ah, scattering. When the light enters the top of the jar, the photons in the light hit the little tiny particles of fat that are floating in the water from the milk, and they bounce off of them like billiard balls. And it turns out blue light scatters better than yellow and red light. So at the top of the jar, that blue light scatters off and into the camera where you can see it. By the time it gets to the bottom of the jar, all the blue light is scattered away, leaving the yellow and the red behind. Well, what does this have to do with exoplanets? Ah, let's talk. Astronomers discovered the first exoplanets in the 1990s, and since then we have found thousands of them, and we have a lot of different ways to detect them. For example, one of them is just taking a picture and looking in it, and you can see the planets in the images. Another way, one of the most successful ways, is called the transit method. Imagine you have a star and a planet orbiting it. And if the geometry works out that we just happen to see that planet's orbit aligned, right? We're edge on to it. We're looking right along the plane of that orbit. Then once every orbit, it passes directly between the star and us. And we see a drop in the star's brightness, a dip in its light. Well, this can tell you a lot about the planet. For example, how long it takes to orbit the star and how big the planet is. But if it's a solid ball of rock, that's about all you can know, except if it has an atmosphere, has air around it. Then when it transits, some of that light from the star is going to pass through that atmosphere before it gets to us. And we can detect how that light changes. For example, if that light gets scattered, we can determine if there's, say, haze in the atmosphere of that planet. Ah, that's why I did the milk experiment. And in fact, if you examine that light even more closely, really carefully look at it, you can determine what's in that atmosphere. For example, hydrogen, helium, water vapor, oxygen, oxygen which might indicate the presence of life. From light years away, we can look at a planet and maybe see if it's habitable. We can explore the cosmos from home. This gives me incredible hope for humanity. Why? Well, for two reasons, actually. One is that there may come a day when we need to leave the Earth, when humanity will scatter among the stars. And when we do, it'll help to know which planets are habitable and which ones are duds. And we're doing that exploration now. And there's a second reason. When I was a kid, we didn't know of any planets outside of our solar system. And now we know of thousands. And extrapolating, there could be billions of them in our galaxy alone. And it's science that told us this. Our curiosity, our drive to examine and understand the universe. And to do that with open eyes, minds, and hearts to the truth. And it all starts with this. Well, I mean, not necessarily this specifically, but this demo is telling us a little bit about those planets. You should try this at home. It's actually kind of fun. And when you do, vary it a little bit. Maybe put in a little more milk, a little less, a different kind of milk, a different kind of jar, maybe even a different kind of flashlight. Because after all, there are different kinds of stars out there, different kinds of planets, and our experiments about them should be flexible. And remember, there could be billions of Earth-like planets in our galaxy alone. Someday, hopefully, we'll get a chance to explore them. Remember, Cosmos Possible Worlds premieres on September 22nd on Fox at 8, 7 central. Oh, and hey, join us for the Cosmos Future Fair Presentation Day. That's on September 21st at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Fox TV YouTube page for a day of demonstrations that give us hope for the future. Cool.